Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Teslaverse. Today we're going to be talking about Tesla. It has been on quite the run recently, so we're going to look to see where it is. We, we made a video on this regression analysis of Tesla about a month ago. In fact, exactly a month ago is when the last video was. And so now we're just going to, to provide an update. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can you know be, be aware of future updates. Uh, and also give the video a thumbs up, and let's go ahead and jump in. So if, if you remember, we have this fair value line, uh, logarithmic regression line of the Tesla price. It is a simple fit to the equation uh, 10 raised to the power A times L of X minus B. Uh, and A and B are fitted coefficients to minimize the, um, minimize the sum of the logarithmic difference between the price and the regression line. And then um, X is just the number of days. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward regression line. Um, and this is our, you know, quote unquote, our fair value fit. Uh, and then I've, I've added on, you know, kind of like an upper bound and a lower bound. And this is exactly what they looked like, you know, about a, about a month ago or so. Um, and you know that they're, you know, they're roughly corresponding to the bottoms and roughly corresponding to the tops. I mean, it's not exact or anything, uh, but it, it kind of gives you an idea of at least historically speaking, which is a big, you know, historically speaking is, you know, there's a lot of, a lot comes with that. Um, but this, you know, has been kind of our, our, our local bottom, the regression line, which increases monotonically, of course, uh, back in 2013 and again in 2019, this region. And then the upper band, so our upper bound region is, uh, you know, our, we, we hit it in late 2013, early 2014, um, getting close to the end of 2014. And then we came back down to our fair value, okay? Then came back down here, and now we're back up at our fair, at the upper bound region. Now the question, right, is how long can we realistically expect to stay up here? And I get there's a lot of market sentiment right now that uh, you know stocks like Tesla and Amazon are, are essentially just you know all indicators don't really matter anymore, and that they're just going to keep on going up. Uh, and up, of course, there's a chance that that Tesla will continue to go up for a while. There's no guarantees that, that we're near the top even. Um, but I also want to remind you that if you've lived through any speculative bubble in history, whether it's you know Tesla, uh, uh, whether it's cryptocurrency, whatever it may be, whether it was the how you know the dot com bubble, you know, there's always that sense that, you know, this is the new normal. This is the new paradigm shift. Uh, you know, this is the future, and therefore, you know, all past historical stuff is completely meaningless. Um, and and you know that that paradigm shift mentality comes up every speculative bubble. And if you if you even attempt to say, you know, what, well, well, maybe we can't go up this quickly forever, it just gets labeled as you know fud, and, and no one really wants to hear it. Um, but at the same time, we, we also must re you you must recognize the counter argument to that claim. That so the counter argument to the it has to go up forever because this is quote unquote you know the new normal is well what if what if you know what if we're just still um, forming a speculative bubble and that ultimately it it can't hold we can't go up this quickly forever. Now the interesting thing about Tesla is if you go back and look at what happened last time. You know, it did see, you know, when we got to this region, we did correct back down. But for the most part, you know, over the next, say, seven, eight years, it just moved sideways. Um, you know, it didn't continue to just go up at this rate that it was going up in 2013. Um, because if it had, it would have, you know, it would have reached $1,000 in 2014. Uh, but at the same time, it also never retraced back down to the, you know, to the 20 to $30 level that it was at in you know 2013 or so. So it never came back down to this level. It came up here and then it, it retraced a bit, but then it, it quickly came back up. Um, and then it mostly just moved sideways for you know the next seven or eight years. So you know it doesn't necessarily mean that even if even if the trend stops, even if we don't go up forever, uh, which I know you know a lot of people would like to think that it's just gonna it's just gonna go to 10k uh, next year. Um, but even if you know, even if this is the local top, then uh, you know maybe maybe we do something similar where it doesn't necessarily mean it has to crash back down to the bottom regression line at say two hundred dollars, but maybe it just kind of it just goes sideways for a bit. I mean that's another option too. So it doesn't you know there's no there's no guarantees about whatever might happen. Again, it could just go up forever. Um, 
uh, well, I mean, it's not going to go up forever, but it could go up for a while before before any type of large correction is seen. And you can see this correction was, you know, about a 50% correction or so because it was at around $200 and it corrected roughly down to, you know, to $100 or so. Um, so if, it, if we saw, a, you know, a 50% correction where we currently are, okay, so the current price is um, around $1,500. So a 50% correction would take us back down to $750. Um, which would be you know somewhere somewhere in this in this region over here. Now one of the one of the questions I got was well you know could we could we get a more accurate fit on the top? I mean is there a way to you know have a regression line that actually fits the top tops of these points better? Um, and I did that so I, I did get that and this is the one you get um, if you if you just kind of encapsulate the top part of that band while keeping you know the same general equation and you're just uh, shifting that one exponent. And if you apply the same shift to the bottom of the band, to the bottom line, you actually encompass the bottom point here. So applying the same shift both places gets you the same thing. Um, so in this scenario, if we were to come up to the same point that we did over here uh, at the top of that regression line, so you know, note here it was probably around 250 or so, um, but over here, you know, we're looking just south of $2,000 if we were to go up to the top of that regression line. Um, now, again, I mean, at the end of the day, what are these, I mean, they're just imaginary lines. Uh, Tesla may not pay any attention to these lines at all. Uh, maybe it, you know, maybe it goes to three or four K and then, and then sees a correction. I don't really know. Um, but the point is, is, you know, for anyone who is buying Tesla at $200, not that long ago, it's gonna get harder and harder not to sell when you're literally up 10x in a very short period of time. Um, because you can see, I mean, the, if you were buying in this region, it's you're really getting close to that 10x uh, ROI. So, you know, I, I, I don't want to, you know, to scare anyone. I mean, this is not financial advice. Um, let's hope Tesla just continues to go up. But I also do want to, prefer, uh, to sh at least show the counterpoint that uh, the new, you know, the, the idea that it's a new paradigm shift in the market and that it has to go up forever. Um, this is seen in any speculative bubble. You know, there's so many, this sentiment is, is just everywhere within every speculative bubble that I've ever seen in my life. It's always, okay, this is the new normal um, and and it's just going to stay this way for a long time and, and we're just going to go, uh, we're just going to keep going up at the same rate. Um, and let's hope, let's hope that we do continue to go up. But again, you know, stop losses are your friend. Uh, and I just want to, you know, to clarify, you know, if on, on the chance that you, we do see a correction back down to say the fair valuation line, or maybe we just move sideways for a while back to the fair valuation line and then continue to move. Um, but what, what if, I mean, you always have to consider all possibilities. What if this is the top? Or what if, say, 2K is the top or, or 3K is the top? The question is, are you, you know, do you just hold it forever? Um, would you be okay if the price came back down to, say, $700, $800? Would you be okay having not sold any at this point? Uh, and that's something you just have to consider for yourself. I mean, if you're okay with that, uh, then, you know, good for you. I mean, this is part of your, your own risk management, I suppose. Um, if, on the other hand, you bought at, say, two or three hundred dollars, I mean, many of us have been buying in this region for a long time, uh, just because that's where the price was for, for years before we've seen this move here, um, then just remember that it will be harder and harder for these people down here not to be selling when they're up 10x. Uh, so it's just my own opinion. Uh, take it for what it's worth. If you follow the channel, you also know that I, I make risk metrics for a lot of different uh, things that I study. Mostly cryptocurrency is what the channel is called. I mean, into the cryptoverse. Uh, but I do apply it sometimes to other markets like Tesla. And I just wanted to show what it, what it came up with. So if I apply the same, you know, the same type of risk study that I normally do for cryptocurrency and I apply it to Tesla, this is what you get. You can see we kind of, you know, just so you know, this is a logarithmic scale. The risk goes from zero to one, meaning you know when it's dark blue, it's a really good time to be buying. And when it's dark red, then you know it's basically saying, okay, we're likely due for a correction soon. And you can see the last time we started to see those really darker red points in this region over here in late 2013, there was a correction. And then we ended up going back up 
but because we kind of consolidated, you know, in this region, the risk wasn't as high because, you know, we had actually established a more uh, a baseline of support rather than just going up every single day, essentially. Uh, so now, where do you see? We're kind of in that same region. We got into that dark red region here at $1,000, and then we retraced back down to you know $300, where the risk came back down to about even at around 0.5. And now we've gone back up, and you can see we're, we're getting back into that really dark red, so between 0.9 and 1 risk regime. Now, you know, it's not, it's not that hard to imagine that, I mean, what's a couple more points among friends? I mean, what if we, what if we come up another, another few points on the curve and, and you see Tesla go to 2K or 2,500? Uh, that's ultimately not gonna you know, break the model or anything, but just know that historically speaking, uh, this move is, is fairly unprecedented. And to consider that this is the new normal does come with its own inherent risks involved because you have to ask yourself, well, what if it's not? What if it's, you know, what if this move is, is like other moves we've seen where, you know, it didn't continue that same increase over over the long term. And maybe, and, and you know, the, the nice thing about Tesla, I should say, is again, while this was, you know, like kind of like our local peak and then we came back down and then had a, had a secondary peak, it actually did not come with a major crash, okay? It, it just moved sideways. So again, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting observation uh, with regards to Tesla. That, for instance, with a lot of cryptocurrencies, when you when you see this type of movement, you know it's 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 followed by like an eighty percent drop. Uh, so that's just uh, you know what I think. Uh, by the way, check out my Telegram channel. You can find it here in the upper right hand corner, and also we do have a premium list, uh, which you can also find in the description below. I also want to pull up uh, TradingView because I do think it's useful. To, to look at the markets on TradingView. I know a lot of you guys use TradingView. So I just quickly coded in um, my logarithmic regression stuff. So the yellow line here is, is just the fair value line. Uh, the green line is, is, is our lower bound region. And then the red line is our upper bound region. You know, we'll see what happens. We'll see if, we'll see if, we, can, if we can create a new normal, uh, like an actual new normal by just continuing to skyrocket above the upper region here. Um, you know, if we, if we come up to even $2,500, where we're clearly well above where this regression line is. Um, so you just have to consider that anything's a possibility. We, we may continue to go up and, and say, you know what, Tesla's not playing by the rules anymore. Um, maybe it never did. And, and we're, we're just creating an entirely new market. And, and you know, watch out for, for Tesla and Amazon as, as they change the world. Maybe this, is, maybe this is the narrative that ultimately plays out. Or maybe the narrative is, all right, this is, we're getting, we're getting close to where the local top may be. Um, and if you look at the lower bound of this, it's currently at around 1400 or so. Uh, you can actually see it, um, see it uh, next to the regression band. It's, it shows that the, uh, the, the lower bound top is 1460 and the upper bound top is 1859. Um, so if it if the price stays within that region, where by by the you know by by this analysis we're still in that upper region of the of the bubble. If it goes above that region, then we're kind of completely in new new territory, and um, you know we'll see what happens. Um, so this is what it looks like. I did want to draw your guys' attention to another thing, as many of you have already seen this, but if you take a measured move, basically from from the bottom right before the pump. So we're not gonna go all the way back here. But if we just say take it from right here and take it you know, to the top, you can see that it occurred over around 490 days and it was an 871% move, okay? So a four, over 490 days, Tesla went up 871%. In 2019, if we take this as our bottom and go to where we currently are at, at our top, it's been 398 days and we've seen a 736 move, 736% move. If we were to repeat history and we kept going up until we got to around 490 days or so and saw an 871% increase, that would put us around that point, okay? What is this point? It's uh, September of 2021. Um, or sorry, not September of 2021. It's September 20th uh, of 2020. So we're just we're just talking about you know another another hundred days or so because I mean we're currently um, you know just about a couple months away from 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 September. So not 2021. I meant to say uh, 2020. 
Um, and you know, there's obviously a lot of a lot of big stuff in 2020 uh, or in September. So so just watch out for this because if you if this is if this move, you know, I mean, they say that history doesn't repeat itself, but it does often rhyme. Um, if this is the case, and we see a move similar to this one, and we just see it again over here, um, then this would be another 871 percent move over you know approximately the same time period 490 days and it would it would basically completely rhyme with what happened back in 2013 and maybe it's just happening again over here so this is the general thing I, I want you to take away from from this video let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below if you you know if you if you want to see this updated I, I, I do update it live I do have a premium list I do tend to focus on cryptocurrencies but we do branch off to, you know, to Tesla, we've talked about oil and, and stocks in general, modern portfolio theory, um, all this sort of stuff. If you guys want to, if you guys find this stuff interesting, want to see this updated more regularly, I, you know, I mainly just post an updated Tesla video every month or so. But if you'd like to see this updated more regularly, then please check out my premium list and you can find it at intothecryptoverse.com uh, and, and you'll get access to all this stuff. You'll get access to a weekly report, a weekly premium video and a Google Sheets dashboard, which has like live risk levels. And it'll also have this regression, you know, this regression analysis. You'll be able to follow along with where we are on the chart. Um, so this is the important thing. And, and so that you can follow along, you can, you can kind of tell, okay, well, are we, are we getting close to that upper region? Um, how, are we, how are we faring with that? And, and you know, where is our fair value? Because according to this, the fair value is around $653. Um, for Tesla, if you if you just look at this, and, and maybe you say, you know, maybe your your response to, oh, well, what does that mean? I mean, it's a fair, you know, what is that, the fair value? Is that is that important or, or anything like that? Well, if we just remove this really quick, you can see, again, that in, in 2013, when the price was up here, we were approximately, you know, at the time, we were approximately, you know, 63% above the fair value line. And if we were to come over here, and if we were to go to say 1863, let's say we hit 1863 sometime in September. Um, if we were, uh, if we were to do that, where would we be? The fair value is right there. I mean, it's, it's just math, guys. 63% off. Um, so this is the idea. I mean, while, while, the fair, while we're significantly above you know, the, the quote unquote fair value line, uh, and this may seem like an absolutely ridiculous fair value. Well, once upon a time, we were also the same percentage above it. And we did end up coming back down to it. I mean, the price was much higher at the time. By the time we came back down to it, the, the fair value had increased by 100%. Um, so maybe by the time that, we, that Tesla comes back down to the fair value, maybe the, the price is, is $1,200. Uh, but I just want to provide this more macroscopic picture of the Tesla market. Uh, so that you guys can, you know, so you gotta appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, this isn't content you'll you'll generally find elsewhere. So I try to provide like a, a different picture, if you will, rather than just pulling up like the one hour chart or the four hour chart or or anything like that. Let's just take a step back, look at the macro picture. I mean, a lot of people with stocks, anyways, are, are holding them for a long time. This is what we're looking at. This is certainly an exciting time. I just want to remind you that you know. This is an exciting time, but it's it's important not to squander it. Um, and you know, setting stop losses, I think, is a great way to do that if you just want to ensure that you take profits. Uh, if and you know, if the price were to drop. Um, so let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. Again, please subscribe to the channel so you guys can catch the next video on Tesla, which I'll likely put out in another month. And if you like the content, we do have the the, the public Telegram channel. We have almost four thousand people, so you can join that. And if you want access to this analysis, as well as other content that you may or may not find useful, uh, you can check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. All right, guys, that'll wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.